we're moving into this future where it's quite clear there is explicit knowledge, that is machines, and then there's tacit knowledge, red bar. Tacit knowledge means, for example, subjective, cognitive, non-codified information, which makes up about 95% of human lives. Non-codified means it's not clear if it's zero or one. It could change. It needs interpretation. While explicit knowledge is objective and logical and technical, machines will take over this territory, easily transferable. It can be recorded. Can a computer be a scientist? Well, not in the traditional definition of a scientist. But yes, we can have an AI scientist in a, in a new definition, of course. There wouldn't be anything thinking about anything else than this. So be very limited scientists, but still, right? Computer can drive a car, even though we don't really have a lot of self-driving cars. But so we see where this is going. I mean, it's going to be a world where we have to think more about what I call IA, intelligent assistance. And I encourage you to look in this direction because intelligent assistance means these are power tools that make us faster and better and more informed and more competitive and maybe more human even. Intelligent assistance. I mean, this is basically what all technology does. Uh, but I think it's a better word than AI because it's not as confusing. We're going from the simple application of intelligent assistance to AI, which is a little bit more widely intelligent, and then to AGI, artificial general intelligence. AGI means a computer that would substitute humans in all of applicable tasks, all of them. That's what OpenAI is building. That's what Microsoft is doing with OpenAI. I think that's a very bad idea. Because an artificial general intelligence will have to be somewhat conscious to make those decisions. Probably not a good idea for us when we think about that we want to be conscious. When we think about the definition of intelligence, the ability to solve problems, that's intelligence. Machines will be able to do some of that problem solving. When we think about the flip side of this, consciousness is the ability to feel things. They are not that much related. Just because you're more intelligent doesn't mean you're conscious or vice versa. The ability to feel things. And this is so important in education. We need to go back to this. We need to stop saying that we need to be more intelligent, faster, and know more stuff, and have five PhDs and to have a job. No. I think that's true for some people, obviously. Right? But to be able to feel things, to understand things. Look at this slide. On the left is a computer. That's what a computer does best. This is what we do. When you put your hands into water, you're smelling, you're tasting, you're feeling. It's a complex world. Computer doesn't have that. So it's very important to think, as Polanyi, the famous philosopher, said, we know more than we can tell. That's what you want to get to. So somebody would hire you and say, this person can add value beyond information. Otherwise, I get a robot. And believe me, you know, when I say this, I think a lot of companies will hire robots to do simple knowledge work. Banking, insurance because the robots will be able to do a, a cheap job. They don't have humans. They don't have unions. They don't have strikes. You know, a, an AI can fly an airplane today. The reason that we don't see airplanes without pilots is not because airplanes can't do it. It's because it's only one or two pilots. And we need them for other things. So we keep them, and people don't feel good about not having a pilot. But in principle, this thing can fly by itself. There's other reasons that we have the humans. So we know more than we can tell. Marshall McLuhan, 1976, says education must shift from instruction to discovery. And that is just so true. I think Poland is a lot like Germany, where I went to school and, and the university. It's mostly about instruction, you know, downloading stuff. This will not work. Because instruction will be endless, and you can instruct the computer to beat you very easily by having a voice command. So all the stuff you've ever learned that you kept for later can be instantly summoned from a machine. That's a very bad plan. And <laughs> we need to think about discovery. 
bring back discovery. That's what good science is all about. That's the key word of the future, discovery. Because discovery is about creativity, about imagination, about foresight, about insight, about storytelling. Discovery. And that's what you want people to understand when they come to work for, to discover things that are possible, to ask questions, and to actually be alive rather than to be a program. 